Hello, my name is Diego Campos, and I'm the composer for The Light of Versa. Over the past few years, I've scored the original Cyber Attack short film, which The Vinings created, and the Seek First film. So naturally, a feature-length film was quite a task. I'm the least equipped to do this of all of us. The first thing I did was I opened up a file in Logic and I started improvising on the piano and I made sure to be recording the impro improvisation. And then after that, um, I listened to the improvisation and I tweaked a few things and I, you know, let it sit. And then I got opened up the, the file after a while and I tweaked it a little bit further and started adding uh, like an orchestral accompaniment to the piano improvisation piece. Now this wasn't too involved, but it did add quite a bit to the overall piece. Now this piece can be heard on the actual soundtrack at the very beginning of the early sketchbook. Now this was started in like February of 2019, February, um, March of 2019. Um, so it's a pretty old composition, but it's one that I still like to listen to every now and then. I think it establishes a nice atmosphere. So after I established the main theme, which was the dun 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 I also um, was able to put together the Caden theme. Now, Cadence theme is the one that goes. After that, I was able to create the bad guy theme, which has that doo 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 sort of sound, um, almost like a snake. That was the idea: was to um, make it sound like it was slithering, and then you know, to add on top of that, the character's name is Sace. So I thought I thought that was a, ni a nice uh, a comp complementary relationship between the sort of slithery sound and the slithery sound of the name. And this was also originally in the early draft, um, the early sketchbook. And so after that I just started writing the score and I did write it mostly and that's what you hear on the early sketchbook that's the entirety of what i had come up with the main plot points oh introduction of good guy introduction of bad guy introduction of the silvarian people training and then you have all of that stuff like the finale as well and so a few months went by and i let it sort of collect dust i let my mind diverge from the whole thing and then i came back to it and i decided that i could do a lot better technically i could compose it technically better and so what i did was i took all of those i distilled the themes from them and i created a terrible soundtrack i created a terrible introduction and all that stuff it was it was bad and so I again let, my, let myself get separate from it, and then I finally thought the premiere is six months away. I need to get started on the final version of everything. So with the luxury of time on my side, I began writing the opening credits. And the opening credits let me explore things that I did not even know were possible in musical composition.
opening credits opened up a whole new realm. And so, with this sort of newfound hope in mind, and this newfound sort of love that like was sparked from this piece I had composed, I finally caved and went all in and I just started writing, 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 writing. And I didn't stop writing until March of, of 2021, the last second I was in there making tweaks and changes. Another interesting thing about the score is that we were actually able to get a choir to perform uh, verses for the um, the Silverian Place music, the one that goes Populus. I'm terrible at singing. Sorry. And so that that one came into play later on at the journey begins whenever we leave the Silverian place we're done with the Silverian place we won't see it again until the very very end of the movie um and so we hear it whenever they're leaving and it's playing under the swelling music and then they're off on their adventure It's extraordinary that we were able to do this at my home parish of St. Mary of the Apostles here in Dublin, Texas. Um, it's a little farther away from me, but uh, it was still incredible. Everybody was able to drive down and we got the keys and they let us in the building and they let us record it at, the, at that church. It was really crazy and really awesome that we were able to do that. And it was a great experience. The last thing I'd like to talk about is the three theme, as I've sort of come to call it. Um, this was actually a pre-existing piece which I had written in sort of mid to late 2020, and I hadn't actually thought to incorporate it into the film until I was sitting there and I was like, you know what, this one might actually work. <laughs> so what I did was I took a piece that I had originally composed for my uh, sister, brother-in-law, and little sister, and it was just meant to be like a little homage to them. I wanted to write something for them, and so I wrote it in sort of like three parts of the of the piece, and then a sort of like culmination there at the very end, and it's like, you know, peaceful. And so I decided this would be a great theme since it's um, since like it's already based on the sort of emotional connection I have with my with my siblings, to have it in the film as the emotional connection between uh, Bryn and Caden, who are the siblings in the film. And so I set about and I just sort of incorporated the theme here and there very subtly uh, with just the melody line. And then at the very end of the film, it culminates in the entire piece of three.
So that, that's, that's a, an interesting fact. It's a very important piece to me, and I'm very glad that I was able to incorporate it into the film. Um, just, you know, so that way it's sort of like, everybody sees it, and it's, it's there forever um, for people to listen to, and yeah, it's, it means a lot to me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this small sort of um, behind the scenes about the Light of Versa score. Um, if you want, you can buy a Light of Versa soundtrack deluxe edition from my website or my Bandcamp. And um, thank you very much. <laughs>